It is looking like the tenure of Salt Lake City's first black school superintendent is going to be a short one. The school board appears ready to terminate Dr. Timothy Gadsden after he served barely a year on the job. We're going to go out to Robert Gerke. He joins us via Zoom with more on what he and the TRIB staff found out. Robert, good morning. Tell us what taking a deeper look, what kind of insight you got from that. Yeah, so there's been a lot of reporting done on this issue, and we decided to try to do a deep dive, pull it all together. Um, you know, what, what it's looking like is that there it was a lot of consternation when Dr. Gadsden came to the state. He was, uh, you know, upsetting people with the way he was uh, adjusting the policies and the way the Salt Lake District operated. There were also questions about some hires he, he made early on and a trip he took in particular uh, to a private school in Arizona that was either paid for, if you believe a statement that he filed with the Attorney General's office, or, or that he paid for, if you believe him and, and what he said about his receipts. All of this, though, is coming to a head potentially tomorrow at the school board meeting, uh, where one board member, Mohamed Bayad, says that he thinks that they're looking to get rid of the superintendent. They've already made an attempt to buy him out of his contract. Uh, they did that last month. He refused it. They put him on administrative leave, where he remains right now. Um, and so all of this is, is, is a big problem for the school district, frankly, because this is a district, you got to remember, has had, it, it will be on its fourth superintendent, assuming he leaves, uh, in, in less than three years. It's huge turnover, and we're just a few months away from the start of the school season. So, you know, they've got to come to some resolution on it so they can move forward. Um, but it's, it's, a big, it's a big headache for the school board, for parents, and, and obviously for Dr. Gadsden. Now, obviously, we've, we've reported in the past about the allegations of racism that uh, supporters of Dr. Gadsden have made. Um, Mohammed Bayad, the board member I mentioned in particular, has been outspoken on that. And Dr. Gadsden's supporters are out there trying to drum up support, get people to come to this meeting tomorrow night to speak in Dr. Gadsden's uh, favor, speak in his defense. And so we'll see how that plays out tomorrow at 630. You know, anytime you know, any race is involved, it makes it a very touchy, difficult situation. But I remember interviewing him when he came here initially a year ago, and they wanted diversity. That was one of the reasons that he's here, because of the diversity that he brings and the people that he can hire here. And I know, I mean, he does have a strong personality, so you can kind of understand why sometimes those personalities rub people wrong. But do you really think this is about race? Well, I mean, that's a hard question to answer, right? Uh, one of the people I interviewed, uh, a district administrator who I interviewed, said it's possible that he could be, you know, uh, subject to some racist uh, attitudes or, or microaggressions. He also could be bad for the district, and both things can be true. So I, I don't know exactly where the truth lies. It's hard to get at what is motivating people's actions. Certainly, his defenders say this is this is racism. He is the first black superintendent in the district's history, and they did bring him in hoping to get some diversity. It's the most diverse school district in the state, and so they were trying to reflect that a little bit in the administration. Three of the hires that I mentioned that he brought in. They're all black black uh, administrators as well. Uh, one of them, Kimberly Mackey, has left short after just a few months because it was discovered that she didn't have a doctorate that she had put on her resume. Another one, there's questions about a previous suspension of her record of her uh, teaching license in Florida, and, and there's another one who was fired from a job uh, previously as well. So there are these issues where they're they're all black people, but they're you know we don't see those same sorts of accusations made against uh, white hires. So it's it's hard to it's hard to you know especially when you're talking about uh, questions like racism, it's hard to get into what motivates people to do what they do. Uh, there, there is, uh, there seems to be some legitimate questions about this trip. Uh, he took the to Phoenix to Grand Canyon University. This is a private for-profit university out of Arizona. It's had some uh, problems with allegations of fraud and so forth in the past, but both he and the Canyon superintendent took this trip to Arizona. The Canyon uh, superintendent had his trip approved by the district. Um, Dr. Gadsden, uh, said he paid for it himself, but he also in May filed a statement, a sworn declaration with the attorney general's office saying that it was all expense paid trip. And that's problematic because when, the, when you know, entities, when public entities are uh, exploring whether to partner with a private uh, uh, vendor, they're not supposed to take gifts like that, particularly trips. And so, you know, there, there are some lingering questions about that. If that's if, if it is true that it was paid for, that's a big problem for the board. Um, and, and we'll see what, uh, what comes of that, I think, in a, in, a, in a fairly short period of time. Yeah, you mentioned that Dr. Gadsden does have some support. Does he have enough? 
Well, uh, it doesn't appear that he has enough on the board currently. I mean, the board had voted to try to buy him out. As I mentioned, they offered him four months' salary. Uh, he has a year left on his contract right now. It was a two-year contract. He's been on the job for just about a year, um, and and he refused that. So. Right now, the board is trying to explore ways, it appears, to end this relationship one way or another. And that's sort of my big takeaway, I think, is that it's hard to envision how this plays out in a beneficial way for the district. Either Dr. Gadsden leaves one way or another, whether he's fired or whether he agrees to resign, and, and the district has to then go about finding, it's again, like I mentioned, the fourth superintendent in less than three years and, and, and deal with the, the fallout from this. Or he stays, conceivably, and, and this consternation that, it's, that we experienced or that we encountered as we were interviewing people for this story, people who are frustrated with his management style and so forth. There was a, there was a pretty telling survey of employees that was taken earlier this year, late last year, um, to, that, that just reflected some real angst about the way things were being conducted at the district. So if, if he stays, then they've got to navigate that, and those hard feelings. So it, it's hard to see how this plays out well in any circumstance for the Salt Lake School Board and the district, and frankly, for the families that, who send their kids to these schools. It is quite, it is the, quite pickle. the pickle. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You can read this column, Robert Gerke's column on sltrib.com today.